Hell is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, global leaders are in turmoil as a looming catastrophe escalates. And right now, three major countries are on the brink of outright economic disaster. We'll show you who these countries are, the issues they're facing, and why it may be just too late for any of them before they all are plunged deep into a recession. Plus, we have a sponsor for today's show. I'd like to welcome back Hillcrest Energy Technologies. You can find them on the CSE under symbol HEAT and on the OTCQB under symbol HLRTF. And the reason you want to check them out is if you are a technical trader, this is an incredible setup. We're seeing the RSI and the MACD leading price higher. That means momentum is pulling price up. I'll show you where the shorts are at and how this could lead to a quick 38% with a potential of a 55% percent move higher stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information now let's head over to bloomberg where we start with the united states who's facing all of a sudden a crisis that many said couldn't happen as Biden gains against Trump vanish on deep economic pessimism, this is according to a recent poll, and yet many people have said, of course, we noticed the political elite, we noticed the central bankers telling us just how strong and robust the U.S. economy is, but now all of a sudden we're starting to see that consumers' attitudes are changing in a big way, and unfortunately, the economic data is starting to validate that we too are at the beginning of a slowdown. For the Biden administration, this could not be worse information as revision comes as the poll respondents offered a bleak near-term view of the economy, the issue that has consistently registered as their top concern at the ballot box. The majority of swing state voters see worsening economic conditions in the coming months, with fewer than one in five saying they expect inflation and borrowing costs to be lower by the end of the year. So what they're suggesting and indicating right now is their wages are not growing at the pace that is necessary. They believe prices are going to stay higher. They believe they're going to fall further behind economically, and that is not going to go very well, not only for the current administration as they look to get reelected, but for the U.S. economy as we look to demand falling, and yet today we have strong evidence that's already begun. And despite a resilient job market, only 23% of respondents say the employment rate would improve over the same period. In reality, if we start to see the U.S. economy slow any further, further, it means the job market that everyone is pinning the success of our economic future on is about to see the floor fall out from underneath it. And many people, as we look at the poll here, they see three quarters of the respondents say the president is responsible for the current performance of the U.S. economy, and nearly half said, well, he's very responsible. And the problem is we now look to durable goods new orders as they suffer the biggest year-over-year -year decline since the COVID lockdowns. So we talk about what's facing the U.S. economy right now, and it's a slowdown in demand. And yet we continue to hear how strong the labor market is. The weekly unemployment claims continue to come in right around 212,000. The weekly force continue claims hold right around 1.8 million, suggesting that anything can tilt the economy and the labor market in one direction or the other. And right now, durable goods are saying, well, if consumers are about to pull back on their demand, well, that means more people are about to lose their job. And here we can see the roller coaster ride that is Durable Goods News Orders continues this morning after the last six months or so have seen monthly swings higher and lower with no discernible whatsoever trend amid the on and off again turmoils of Boeing's orders. Preliminary March data slows slightly better than expected 2.6% month over month rise in the headline orders print. But thanks to downward revisions, the Durable Goods Orders, this is the big year, biggest year over year drop that down 2.2%. 2%, if you can imagine, that is the worst since the COVID lockdowns, suggesting that the U.S. manufacturing sector that we talked about yesterday with well, those flash PMIs is indeed slowing down in a big way. And for the U.S. economy, this is a problem because as you lose manufacturing demand, 
You lose jobs, you lose jobs, you're headed right into recession. Of course, for Biden, that does not look good heading into November. And as many people are now piled into tech stocks, we see the AI bubble may have just burst as computer and related product orders plunged a whopping 3.9% month over month, the biggest drop now since the COVID lockdowns. And what this means for the labor market? Well, it means disaster is indeed coming. If we look at manufacturers, new orders of durable goods, the shown in blue on a year-over-year -year rate change against continued unemployment claims in blue and red. Now, I want to note that not all periods and decelerations of new orders lead to a rise in continued claims. When you see that happen, it means the economy is strong enough that as the manufacturing sector slows down, it's creating enough other jobs. But look at all the other periods here. You see a slowdown in manufacturing. What do you see? A rise in continued claims, a big slowdown in manufacturing, a big big rise in continued claims, a repeat of that into the global financial crisis. You see going into the pandemic, as the world was headed into a recession, you see a contraction in durable goods leading to start of an incline in continued claims. And look now, you can see a big drop off following the pandemic. And then look at this, new orders steadily declining, continued claims steadily rising, suggesting we're on the cusp of a big move higher in unemployment claims. And lo and behold, today we get some news out of one big U.S. manufacturer, that's Tesla, as they look to cut more than 6,000 jobs, this across Texas and California. And this is exactly what we talked about what happened. You start to see demand fall, but manufacturers didn't believe it. They bought into the rhetoric of what these political elites were telling them, that the second half of the year was going to boom, it's going to be super strong. Consumers are going to come out and spend in a big way, even though their pandemic savings are gone. And now all of a sudden, what happened? Manufacturers built up inventory. They were excited to see it move. And all of a sudden, it didn't. And that leads, of course, to what we know is people losing their jobs. It starts with getting hours cut, as we talked about in those S&P Global Preliminary PMI reports yesterday. And then it leads to job cuts. Tesla had more than 140,000 employees globally before it started its largest ever round of cuts. While the automaker said on April 15th it was laying out more than 10% of its workforce, the actual number of people ushered out may exceed 20,000. This is according to people inside the company. And this is, of course, dangerous news. This is exactly what we see that happens in the manufacturing sector. And for the U.S., not only is it terrible as President Biden looks for re-election and now faces what will likely be a very deep and protracted recession, we know the odds of re-election in that that case or well somewhere about zero but for the u.s economy it means of course bad news is coming and we have one person we can really blame for or at least one agency that's the federal reserve we can look at new orders here and you can see the yield curve this is when you take 10-year yields and subtract two-year yields and when we're down here roughly around this gray line across the horizon well that tells us we're at an inversion anything closer that means we're near term so when you see an inversion start to approach what happens is typically new order growth goes down this is how the economy Economy gets slowed down in a big way. You see it again around 1998. You see it leading into the dot-com bubble, again heading into the global financial crisis, again during the pandemic. Now, you don't always get a slowdown in manufacturing with an inversion, but what you or you do get a slowdown in manufacturing with every inversion, but you can get a slowdown in manufacturing without one. And here you can see it happening again as we face, of course, the Federal Reserve, who just doesn't want to cut rates. They're just adamant that if Inflation is a problem here, but as the manufacturing sector goes and you see companies like Tesla lay off 10, maybe 20,000, well, those people, their spending power is going to drop and that's going to lead to other people losing their job. And in a matter of months, the employment situation in this country could look substantially worse. Of course, we note this has everything to do with consumer demand as retail sales now shown in red against manufacturers' new orders for durable goods in blue, both on a year-over-year rate change. And you can see decelerations and, of course, retail sales start to indicate that, yes, indeed, manufacturers' new orders are going down. They tend to move fairly consistently, although advanced retail sales have more than just durable goods in them. You generally see the pattern here. It's very clear. Consumers don't.
don't have the money to spend. And we note that because, of course, banks are tightening lending standards, and this happens every time we note that the Fed inverts the yield curve, banks tighten lending standards because they start to get concerned about getting their money back. On top of the fact they can't make money on the loan spread, here you see when consumers can't touch those credit cards. Well, there goes retail sales, there goes durable goods, and next thing you know, we're in that same place right now, and we're on the edge of what could be a big drop in new orders, not to mention a big loss of jobs that are coming for the U.S. This is disastrous news because the rest of the world is pinned on our success right now. But if there's any slowdown, it could lead to the Fed cutting and many other countries such as Japan desperately need the Fed to cut rates. The problem is it's not coming soon enough. As they too face a crisis, this of their currency is yet weakens even more past key 155 level, adding to intervention risk. And we've talked about how currency spiraling out of control usually lead to economic crises. The yen now continuing to fall. Bank of Japan and officials, they have said repeatedly that they will take the necessary action to address excessive moves in the yen if needed. The question is when the authorities have emphasized to focus on the pace of the currency's depreciation rather than a precise level because they don't understand why their currency is falling. They're seeing it continue to drop. The countries like China are intervening. We know Japan is about to. Will it make any sense? Will it work? The answer is I'll show you why it won't. And a surprising rate hike would make much more sense than the currency interventions. Of course, many people believe that when central banks tighten monetary policy, that's bullish for the currency. The most efficient way to stabilize the battered currency is to surprise the market with rate hikes. It wouldn't make a difference because the problem here for Japan is if you raise rates even more, while well, you cut off economic growth. It's a challenge. You have a weakening currency and a slowing economy. It, the math doesn't work out for policymakers at all. But here you can see manufacturers new orders of durable goods against the Japanese yen to US dollar spot rate. And what I want you to see here is that when there's a slowdown in demand and economic output, this is key, do you see a decline in currencies against the dollar? So what you're seeing here in red is the Japanese yen to US dollar spot rate is a dollar is appreciating in value as do durable goods new orders decline, meaning the yen is weakening. And you see the yen weakening again and again. Every time now, you know, that when new orders are headed down, that means the yen is going with it. There are a couple isolated cases where you don't see it, but right now we see that as global demand is slowing down. And so even if officials in Japan intervene in their currency, it's not going to help at all. But one thing that could be of a huge help, particularly if you're a trader, well, you're going to love the next article. If you want to know when to see a flip, check out our subscription report. Yesterday, we had 100% accessory everything we flagged went up and this one will be a big trade and while you're there check out hillcrest energy on the cse under symbol heat and on the otcqb under hlrtf that stock looking to make a big move along with perhaps record yen shorts are increasing the chances of a sharp painful snapback setting up a big opportunity for those who want to go along the yen again before you do that sign up we'll show you when as bets by leverage funds and asset managers on yen weakness increased to more than 173,000 contracts this through April 16th, the most on record in the Commodity Futures Trading Commission data going back to 2006. And this means huge opportunity as an investor. And you see catastrophe starting to loom for, of course, the Japanese economy. But if you're looking to take the other side of this, again, sign up. We'll tell you when. And what this does is suggest the yen could be vulnerable to a snapback. And what they desperately need here is is either the Bank of Japan to raise rates, which they're not going to do, or they need to Fed cut rates, which they're not in a position to do. But at some point, someone is going to do something. You're going to see a big snap here. And either it's the Japanese economy that's going to go, or we're going to see something else cause those shorts to get squeezed. Officials there facing a crisis of their currency, but they're not the only ones facing a currency crisis. The Chinese are as well as currency alphas are now accelerating, priming the next Bitcoin surge. This, of course, from Zero Hedge, suggesting that unfavorable interest rate spread between China and the U.S. will likely imply persistent depreciation and outflow pressures in the coming months. Or in other words, September's biggest currency outflow in years is just beginning and very 
very soon. In addition to geopolitics and central banks, the world will also be freaking out about the capital flight out of China, not to mention where all those billions of Chinese savings are going, in which digital, digital currency the Chinese are using to launder their outflows. And again, this is the case when you see, of course, differential and in interest rate policy and monetary policy, money starts slowing out of these countries. That's why Japan can't stop this. That's why China can't stop this. And despite all this money pouring into the U.S. economy, the Biden administration faces a catastrophe of its own as demand goes down and it's going to lead to more and more job losses. As you can see, we're in the very early stages of what will be a globally synchronized recession. And here you can see faster currency outflows in September, one of the biggest moves in years as money goes pouring out of China. And as long as it's headed out, well, that means the economy is going to stay but you know, it's a laggard. And here you can see they're even buying gold by the throat as capital flight accelerates this article from today. As Chinese speculators have really grabbed gold by the throat, that's how John Reedy, the chief market strategist at the World Gold Council, describes a scramble in the communist nation among investors looking to move money anywhere but in the yuan or Chinese assets. This was evidence, of course, as we just showed you, buy currency outflows into alternate currencies. And again, you're looking at multiple catastrophes forming here, and it makes sense why people want out of the yuan. It's because China's yuan slides to a five-month low after a week or fixing from the PBOC. And so what we're seeing out of Japan, what we're seeing out of China, what we're seeing out of the Biden administration is nobody has an answer to what's going on here. The global global economy is slowing, currencies are getting weaker, it's just a matter before something triggers and we're facing an all-out economic catastrophe. But something that is surging and on the backs of rising momentum, that's the stock of our sponsor today's show, Hillcrest Energy Technologies, again on the CSE under symbol HEAT and on the OTCQB under symbol HLRTF. Stay tuned because I want to show you a quick setup on how this stock could move 38% with the potential to move as much as 55%. Let's talk about who Hillcrest is. You can check them out. Links in the description and pinned comment below. They develop electric power conversion technologies tailored to the next generation of e-mobility powertrains and grid-connected power systems. And what's been driving their stock is the impressive amount of news coming out of Hillcrest. Let's check this out. Some of the recent press releases. Here we can see Hillcrest ZVS technology to elevate efficiency and performance of grid-connected power applications. They have a zero voltage switching technology platform that is cutting edge solution and introduces the material elimination of switching losses and the ability to deploy higher switching frequencies without the common drawbacks associated with conventional power inverters. This is groundbreaking and has huge opportunities as Hillcrest has demonstrated an unparalleled inverter efficiency of 99.6%. That is staggeringly impressive. This exceptional efficiency would enhance power production and storage capabilities and contribute to a substantial reduction in the levelized cost of energy. And here you can see they've achieved a major milestone in in-water traction inverter demonstration with Hercules electric mobility. And here we can see the demonstration took place with Hercules electric mobility powered e-boat this here in Orchard Lake in Detroit, Michigan, or just north of Detroit, Michigan. And this was the first successful completion of in-vehicle demonstration of their zero voltage switching traction inverter. They've also just signed a key partnership with BC Hydro subsidiary PowerTech for grid inverter testing. So you can see the case, why momentum's building behind the stock, why people are getting into it. The news flow coming out of it is impressive. And that's why we see here, James Bowen, the chief commercialization officer for Hillcrest, Crest, joined Steve Darling from Proactive to show exciting news about the company's collaboration agreement with PowerTech Labs, and they are going to be providing testing and consulting services to support Hillcrest in the development and validation of its ZVS inverter technology. And they both expressed enthusiasm for the collaboration and saying that leveraging PowerTech Labs' state-of-the-art testing facilities, experience experts, and extensive industry relationships, Hillcrest aims to accelerate the development and validation process process 
for its ZVS technology. And with that, they just closed a second tranche of non-broken private placement. This happening last Tuesday. And now let's talk about their stock setup because look at the RSI. Once you see it came down here around 14 cents into oversold territory. The MACD indicated it was oversold as well. And what's happening, the relative strength index is rallying here as is the MACD. MACD turning into positive territory. Momentum building, leading price higher. This is exactly what you want to see. You'll notice right here at the six month volume profile line, right at 18 cents a share, the sellers above, buyers right below. You break through this wall of sellers. You've got a quick potential pop up to the recent high here of 25 cents. That's your 38% return. A move all the way up into this upper supply zone. You're looking at a potential 55% return. And you can see this beautiful setup as we zoom in to the 90 day chart. Technically, you're seeing again, a rally in momentum led right into the supply zone seeing where buyers are at holding the price of stock look for a move higher here again you can find them on the cse under symbol h e a t and on the otc qb under symbol h l r t f and as always with any company we feature on our show you're under no obligation to purchase their stock be sure to do your own research before placing any trades and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now